Good morning, everyone. How are we? Are we feeling energized after the picnic yesterday? Right, I do have a few props to get on stage, so this might take just a quick minute, but I do have some helpers. So thank you very much. Now, you do see some big steps here. Don't don't worry, I'm, uh, I'm experienced with the ladders. I'll, I'll, I work on them all the time. Um, and I do have people on standby that I haven't asked. So is Diane here today? She's not, well, we don't have someone on standby. We're okay, that's fine. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. She can run down. Um, so, thank you very much. No, they're okay. They look good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yes, so we'll get started. Right, I've got a question for you. Who here likes money? Anyone? I like money. That's okay, you can like money. You're allowed to like money. Um, I talk and think about it quite a lot. And I try and put my most effort in to earn as much as I can, but I ask myself the question quite a lot, um, and especially for this sermon, and by the way, this sermon isn't just for me telling you, it's for me as well. Um, am I trying harder to earn money than I am trying to know God? Now, the title of this sermon was actually given to me by my cousin, um, called, it was Sarah, thank you very much if you're watching, um, but it's called Going for Gold, and I thought it was quite relevant with Olympics being on. Um, and we'll be going on Matthew 6, 6, 24 to 34 will be in today, and I'm going to start off with 6, 24. Um, no one can serve two masters. Either you hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money, or in the King James Version, it's used the words mammon, which is meaning material wealth or money. Um... So we'll head straight into point one. Which master do you serve? Now, there's many things you can uh, be serving above God that you may not realize that you're putting so much more time and effort into. Um, a few examples are just like, would be like your family, friends, work, social media, hobbies, sometimes sports teams, and of course your money. Um, and I'd like to use, as Olympics on, use an example of them and See, their dedication to try and earn a gold medal, it's really inspiring um, to see them put that much effort in. But um, ask yourself this question, are we putting that same sort of dedication towards a relationship with God? Because they're, they're putting that dedication to get a gold medal. Um, but God's reward is far greater than that. It's much better than a gold medal, is it not? Um, now, God needs to be a priority above all the things that are listed, like your friends and family. Um, these things, these sorts of things come under one title, the worldly things. Um, it doesn't mean we can't do these things, of course, but they should come second to God as God's the master. He's the first in all situations. Um, now, I do have, this is where the props come in. Now, can I ask you to come on stage, Benjamin, just to be here? Just, just in case, because you never know. Thank you. Thanks, Joshua. Um, just as a safety precaution though here, don't worry. I'm not, I'm not planning on jumping off these ladders. Don't worry. Now, these are, as you can see, the world. And we also have God, right? And we're using this, say there's like relationship with them scale. Obviously, lower, higher relationship with both of them, right? So getting into this, I'm going to ask you. Some, I'm going to ask you. Where do you think you want to be? So I want a little response here. I want to say, shout yes or no, right for me. Now I'm going to be on the ladders, right? Should, do you want to be here? No. What about here? No. What about this side? No. What about here? Is this better? Yes. No. Higher. What about here? 
Keep going. This one. I can't go any higher. Don't worry, I'm not going to go any higher than this. But you want to be up here. This is where you want to be in your relationship with God. You want to be as high as you can, but to get up there, you're going to struggle getting up here. If you've got any sort of foot or hand on, on, on the world, you're going to struggle if you're on this. So even if you are so high up on both, right, you're still connected to the world, right? You're not, you, you, can't, you won't be able to get much higher with this. You'll find it so difficult to get in a higher relationship with God if you're up here with the world. Thank you guys for holding that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so some people said they were happy being here, right, at first. And obviously, that, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to crucify you for it. It's fine. But it's, it's not, it doesn't matter where you want to be there, as God wants you up here. That's what he's wanting you. And you should want that as well. Um, but you've got a few difficulties with being there, unfortunately. The, the greater your relationship, the higher up you are, um, the more the devil tries to sneak his way into your life. And it's, um, it can be difficult. He can tempt you away for God um, and try and get you on that worldly ladder. Yet, and oh yes, Denzel Washington. You know, you know who Denzel Washington is? Yeah, he, um, an actor. He is a Christian man, and he he said this this, and I this is a quote off of him: "If the devil's leaving you alone, you might be doing something wrong. You must be doing something wrong. Yet, if the devil's constantly attacking you, you've got to be doing something right. But there's, he's not. He's he's just going to ignore you if you're if you're not. So yeah. Anyway, that's Denzel Washington said that, and I thought such a good point, and fits nicely in my sermon. Um. But the devil can have you stuck in like a mean cycle of being addicted to the stuff of the world, but only if you let it. Now, a way, a way you can help through that is like your time alone with God. And now I've, me- I've mentioned a time alone with God in every one of my sermons now, all three of them. So get doing a time alone with God if you're not already. But every day, this is where every day you're wanting to be spending quality time with him. You want to be reading his word and focusing on him. And you're pr- so that's like prioritizing God over like your hobbies or friends, etc. Um, but yeah, yeah, and I'll repeat this again. Let's see. If you stand anywhere on this, you'll struggle to get up here. You're going to struggle with doing that. But, but yeah, the other ways you can, you can do it is just pressing to God's word, word with your prayers and Gain an understanding of what God would have for you. Um, because what God has for you is far greater than what the world can have for you. So much greater. Um, but I'm going to go straight into point two in why worry. And I'll have a little help with, with someone helping me with Matthew 25 and 26. Take it away. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Thank you, Jonathan. He, so this, this clip's from The Chosen, if you haven't seen it. It's, um, it's, obviously, it's, it's about, obviously, Jesus and stuff. That's him playing Jesus in this. And I've found it's helped a lot of my understanding with... Well, quite a lot of the the Bible that is mentioned in it, but um, yeah, it sounds quite a bit better when he says it. So I thought I'd let him let him go for it. But and also with Matthew twenty six twenty seven as well, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Now, no doubt all of us have worried 
at points about whether it's your job or whether it's, or maybe even what you're wearing or something. Um, like for me, I quite quite worried about what job I was gonna get from leaving school. And when I left school, I was working in Lucas, which uh, it was all right. It wasn't bad, but and it's a job. But I worried so much over getting a good income that uh, it distracted me from other things. Um, and but now I've got a really good job because God still had His way of providing for me. And I'm going to dive a bit more into the Matthew 25, 27 here. Um, but as Jesus says, is life not more than food and the body more than clothes? And he gives us an example of something that God values much less than us uh, by saying, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Tell him that he's, he's going to provide for us and we should be placing value in what he's given us. Um, and he provides all these things for, th for things that he places less value on, so why would he not provide it for us? And in verse 27, can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? So why sit and worry about what can, what might, or what will happen when God's provided you with everything you need already? The world can't provide all of your, your like food, clothes, and everything. The world's not going to provide you with all that or even guarantee all these things. Yet, it's been spoken by Jesus himself. So, and we still sometimes struggle to serve that one true loving God. But no one's perfect. That's understandable. Uh, we all fall short of them. But that doesn't mean we can't aim to be of the same excellence as Jesus. We want to try and use them as an example of the way we live. And other ways you can apply, apply this sort of thing is serving others is one way you can do it because serving others is also serving God by doing that. And it takes the focus off of yourself and onto others. Um, and a few ways you can do by serving is like Bethany Care Shuttle, that's a way you can serve your community or in the church as well. You can join one of the many teams. Like I lead the setup and pack down. So if you're wanting to join the team, I'm recruiting. So please. Um, but yeah, we'll go on to point three, which again, are you still worrying? So Matthew 36, 31 to 34. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow is going to worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Now, I'll break it down slightly. Jesus repeats it again. So when Jesus is repeating something, you know he must be pretty serious about it. And he's, so he repeats again, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? He's emphasizing it. And then he says, for the pagans run after these, all these things, and your heavenly father knows that you need them. Pagans being people without a religious belief, they're running after these things. Uh, and sometimes they might be refusing, or they might just not know what, that God can provide these things for them. But that's part of our role in our serving, is to tell people who God is. Tell people what God can provide for you if you're making him the Lord of your life. And that's what it says here. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Again, he tells us the things will be given to us through seeking first. Not second, first. First, his kingdom and his righteousness. Therefore, do not worry. Tells again not to worry. So he's repeated that multiple times now. So get in the hang of it by now. He's, he's telling us not to worry. About tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So it's, it's like saying, do not worry about tomorrow as it will worry about itself. The past is history and today is a gift from God. 
Or if you want to take your wisdom from a tortoise from Kung Fu Panda called Master Ugui, uh, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. Now, it's similar thing to say in take each day as it comes. You hear that saying a wee bit as well. But, um, but again, serving our worldly masters, they can't provide the same thing God can. And the re reward from God is far greater. I've repeated that as well. Emphas I'm emphasizing that. Again, serving worldly masters cannot provide the same thing God can. And the reward from God is far greater. The greater, oh no, sorry, I've read the wrong page. Now, emphasize it again. You want to be at the top of the God steps. You're not wanting to be at the top of the world steps. Relationship, higher relationship with God rather than the world. Because God is the one true master you should be serving, not the worldly things. Not all of these other things. And that's not to say you can't do the worldly things. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying God comes first. God's the one true master comes first. Now, if we trust in him with our lives, then the basics needs he says that not to worry about. They'll fall into your lives. Emily, could we get some keys, please? Thank you. So, for as it says in Matthew 6.33, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. So you're seeking God, you're not seeking the world. If you'd like these things to be provided for you, and you're wanting to invite God into your, into your life today, I'm just, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Everyone's going to say it with me. Um, so just repeat these words after me. Thank you, God, for sending your one and only son to die for us. Forgive me for all the things I have done wrong. I invite you into my life to be my one true master. Help me not to worry and to put my full trust in you. Amen. Amen. Now, if you've made a decision today to just, if you see, see someone on the stage, speak to them about it. Um, and yeah, I'll uh, welcome Matthew up now. Thank you very much.